Good morning, Rock Church, my brothers and sisters on YouTube and Twitter. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson. This is Terrific Tuesday, and we're here to get God praise. Let us pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for another day. Oh, this is a day we have not seen before in this calendar year, July the 26, 2022. Come on, somebody. God, we bless you for giving us 206 consecutive days of your grammar word for the change of our lives to edify ourselves. Oh God, it gives us great pleasure to be able to receive from you. Speak to us this morning. Holy Spirit, order our steps and our stops. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all this morning, Elder Russell. God's blessings upon each and every one of you all. I desire, man, to continue to go on before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords as he's speaking to us, that we may be greater in walking in through his will. There's nothing like knowing that God is in control. Do you really believe that? Do you actually believe that God is in control? Now, let me just say that our knee-jerk response is yes. But let me say, sometimes I am... And I need to be reminded myself that God's in control. Here's the reason why. Because stuff that's happening, man, around our world, in our country, in our community, even in the community of the body of Christ, I have to be reminded that God is in control. And oftentimes, it's when tragic, you know, hardship, it's when people struggle with their health, it's when people are having a tough time. Uh, with the children, tough times in their finances, a, type, a tough time believing, staying hopeful. And I have to be reminded, man, God, you are in control. You're doing something uh, beyond what we can see. And I have to realize that oftentimes, honestly, you know, so it's easy for me to say, yeah, God is in control. But boy, I'm telling you, let us be reminded, and I think this remember word in this study series is going to nail that for each and every one of us, that not only we know intellectually and biblically, it's in the fibers of our spirit, and we'll be able to receive whatever's happening in a sense of God is doing something. So brothers and sisters, I want you to uh, turn your Bibles over to Psalms 139, verse 3. David goes on and it says, you discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Yeah, that's right. Sunday word, David opened up and he says, you have searched me and you know me. In other words, there's nothing hidden from God. And yesterday, David, we read Psalms 139 too, when David declared, you know, when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. So as I look at these three verses and I have to think about these verses, like, you know, hey, you search me, you know me, you know, then, you know, you, you, you know, when I sit, you know, when I rise, you perceive my thoughts. And then it says, you discern my going out and my laying down. You are familiar with all my ways. It's, it's, it's clear that David understood that God was in control. It's, it's, it's a clear word here. And so, and so, and so, as I look at the word and I think about it, you know, I says, well, there's two C's that God really want us to know. Two words. One word is God want us to know that he understand our condition in life. Oh man, the condition we in. You may not, you may not, want to, you know, receive the condition that you're in. Like, I don't receive it. Oh, God understands it, right? And and God going to work you from one condition to the condition that will be most beneficial and fruitful. And maybe that condition you're in right now are fruitful. It is fruitful. It is beneficial. Praise God. You didn't get there by yourself, okay? Hey, God usher you into that. Right? Because he know all things. He's very familiar. And then the other word that start with a C is God is really, you know, he knows our conduct from, from, from our condition to our conduct. Well, see, see, our conduct means so much more than we can even imagine 
because it sets the, a, a platform for what's to come in a sense. So God actually knows these conditions and conducts because he, the Bible says he searches. And any time somebody searches for something, amen, they begin to scrutinize. They get digging deep, okay, looking over our ways. And there's nothing wrong with that because when God look over your ways, what do you think he's going to say at the end? Because there's, there, there will be a time where there'll be an end and because of God looked over our ways, there's some words I, I would love for God to say to each and every one of us. Well done, good and faithful servant. Hey, come on, somebody. But see, how do we get to that place? We get to that place by saying, Father, here I am. Oh, here I am. Oh, God, here I am. Here I am. I'm just, this is black and white. This ain't color. This is raw. Just here I am, God. So as God looked to examine our ways thoroughly, he doesn't miss a thing because he's familiar with every aspect, with every fiber of all we are. He's familiar. And, and, and guess what? There's not one thing he can't tell us that he's not familiar with. The thing is, we got to say, well, Father, here I am. Okay, listen, I want to uh, overhaul if need be. I want to overhaul if it's going to help me with my attitude. It's going to help me with my conduct. It's going to get me to the healthy condition I need to be in. I need an overhaul so I can be my best parent for my children. I can be that best father, that best wife, that best mother, that best husband, that best son, that best cousin, that best auntie, that best, what, uncle. Oh, my God. This, this is what this is all about, right? So, so David, you know, in all his ways, he acknowledged God. That's how we get to a place, amen, working through all that God will have us to work through. Now, I want to ask you this, hey, terrific Tuesday, are you ready to release your faith knowing that God perceives and recognizes our going out, our laying down, that he's totally familiar with all your ways? Well, brothers and sisters, we won't have to keep it simple. Saints, it's not rocket science. There's three things I want us to remember. Hey, man, listen, as we go on through life, we will try, have trials. We will incur long suffering. And when we attempted to think as we go through that, that God is not aware of what we're going through, I got a word right from God. He wants us to know, hey, don't give up your hope in God. See, we got to understand that a lot of times it's easy to give up in hope because of, hey, man, things are coming down on you. Hey, man, attitudes are happening. People are saying things and life, as you know it, man, gets quite challenging. But don't give up hope. Oh, I think I thank God for Reverend Jesse Jackson Jr. He, he, what did he say? Keep hope alive. Come on, somebody, because if you keep hope alive, I don't care what you're going through. You're going to stay on top of being positive, being faithful that God is aware and he's working through your conditions so that your conduct can be different. Number two, when you feel alone and you feel helpless, you got to know that God is preparing something for your good. That's right. Sometimes you feel like you're on an island all by yourself. And you're like, why everybody else seem to be, hey, thriving and, 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 and you know, they moving forward, things looking good in their life. And you feel like, man, I've done my part. I'm doing some of the things that is required, but the outcome of what's happening is not manifesting the way that I believe it should be manifesting. Listen, brothers and sisters, God is doing something and he's working things out on our behalf. You got to trust God in what he has said he will do. Every, hey, every promise in God is amen. That's what we ought to be saying when we're going through feeling lonely, isolated, that we're by ourselves. We, we, we feel like, man, don't nobody understand us. Okay, hey, God is omnipresent, okay? He understands everything because he omniscient. Come on, somebody. And the third thing, when you're tired of being tired, you fill in the blanks, dot, 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 dot. You may be tired of the simple fact, man, that every time you turn around, 
There's shootings in Chicago. There's murders in Chicago. There are things that's happening. People are dying. Hey, man, you may be tired of that. You may be the tired of just, man, I got to get up every day to provide for my family. I'm tired of working. I know I got to work, but I'm just tired. I'm tired of people depending on me. Hey, you may be tired of the fact that, man, hey, you are not at your place where you want to be healthy in your body. You're tired of your weight. You're looking in, you're looking in the mirror and saying, man, I'm tired of this weight, man. I need, I need, I need, I need to be different. You know what I mean? Hey, you may feel like you're tired of being tired of being tired. I am telling you, listen, God wants us to understand this. God wants to keep us in a position that we will lean on to him. See, if we lean on to God, the things we're tired of, in the word of God, it was it would inspire us to be different, okay? God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. We got to get into the word of God and follow the word of God. Take the conditions and the precepts and the principles of God and add them to our conduct so that we can be different. Brothers and sisters, this is not rocket science. How is this possible? It's possible because David said God is familiar with all our ways. So it's not it's not like we don't have the tools to do what God has called us to do. We can be different. We don't have to feel alone. We don't have to feel isolated. We don't have to feel people don't know what we mean. We don't have to feel like we're not understood because God has given us everything we need for life and godliness in the word of God. If we get in this word of God, and I'm telling you, as we're going to go through life, life as we know it is real. Boy, I am telling you, we can't forget the life of Job. Job had everything going on, and man, his family thing, he was thriving. And then what God said, have you considered my servant Job? Job is giving us the blueprint of what God will do when we are actually leaning unto God, not trusting in our own ways. And in the end of it, Job, yes, he did want to die. He was feeling some kind of way, but he did not curse God. He stayed in the position that God would have him in, in his heart. He knew that God was going to bring him through and God brought him through. And Job chapter 23 and verse 10 says, he knows the way I, that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come out as gold. Come on, somebody. Did not Job come out as gold? Didn't God give him a double portion for everything he lost? Didn't God bless him? Yes, he did, because that's the kind of God we serve. He is familiar with all of our ways. Don't you let the Satan discourage you and tell you it's not going to get better. Don't you listen to, hey man, the, the, the voice of the enemy who's trying to get you hopeless and, and helpless. Don't you think for one moment that God don't got your back. He have your back. He have your children back. He have your family back. And I am telling you, he wants you to know this. I am familiar with you. I want you to go in the mirror, in the mirror today. I want you to say to yourself, self no matter what I'm going through, my God is familiar with me. I want you to keep telling yourself that all day to day. My God is familiar with my my marriage. My God is familiar with my children. My God is familiar with my, my, my the, the issues that I'm going through today. My God is familiar with me being successful in the kingdom. He's going to give me everything I need for life and godliness because he's the kind of God that's going to help me in my condition so that my conduct will reflect my God who's able to do a measure more than I can ask or imagine Come on, somebody, give him a hand, praise. Father, God, we bless you. Oh, God, we thank you on this terrific Tuesday. We thank you that you are familiar with our ways. Oh, God, when we lie down, when we rise up, you search us. Oh, you search the deep things of us, the things that we want to admit to, the things that we won't even give breath to, things that we wouldn't say in the atmosphere. God, you familiar with us. God, I pray we will lay it all down to you. We will take our mask off and say, God, here I am. I'm right here. Oh, God, have your way. Here I am. Oh, I was feeling hopeless, but today I feel hopeful. Here I am. 
I was thinking about quitting, but now I'm going to rise up. Here I am. I was thinking about closing the doors and walking away. But here I am. Have your way, oh God, because who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Let God's people say amen. Y'all just been kissed on this terrific Tuesday. Rejoice in the Lord. Let God finish what he started in your life. Your best days are ahead of you starting this moment. Why is that even possible? Because he know when I sit and when I rise. You discern my going out. And my land down, the bottom line, you are familiar with all my ways. Come on, somebody. This is Pastor Robert Lewis Stevenson. I'm excited, boy. Come on now. Today, I just made 54 years old. Come on now. I'm rejoicing. I'm rejoicing. God has given me 54 years here on this earth. Some of y'all said, man, you just a baby. Yes, right. I'm just a baby. Come on, somebody. But listen, I'm here to go have some fun. I'm going to play me some golf. Come on, somebody. I'm going to enjoy the favor. I thank God for my family. And I thank God for my body of Christ, body of Christ family. Last night, they had a little surprise for them. I said, come on, y'all. Y'all, y'all, something. Body of Christ is something else. But hey, enjoy y'all day to day. May God's blessings be upon you all. Know this. God got you, because you have said, Father, here I am. I'm out of here, y'all. I got to go play some golf. I'll see y'all later. Come on, somebody. I'll see y'all later, alligators.